Good morning, church. Pastor Jesse here with The Place Church. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our online church service today. Hallelujah. We're going to pray, then we're going to go through some announcements to keep you informed about what we're doing and how you can help. Amen. So, Father God, we come to you with open hearts today. Lord, we give you praise. We give you thanks for your word. Thank you, Father God, for always being there for us. Thank you, Lord, for walking us through wisdom and understanding. Father God, that we walk underneath your hand of favor, that you have died for us and forgiven us this day. Lord, we give you praise, we give you thanks, Father God, that we leave this service never the same, Lord, forever changed, and we give you praise, we give you thanks for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Hallelujah. Next Sunday is August 2nd, and we will be out at the Park and Praise Field for church service. Service always starts at 10.30 a.m. People start showing up around 10, and we would love to have you. Also, our online church service is always available at noon on every Sunday. Also, Heart to Home Bible Study is every Sunday night at 6 o'clock p.m. with Pastor Michelle and Pastor Denise bringing the word. And if you've never heard it, I know you'll be blessed by what you hear. They're an awesome team, powerhouse for God's kingdom, and they preach the word, and I know you'll be blessed by what you hear. Also, VBS has sadly been canceled due to COVID-19. However, on July 27th, out at the Ravalli County Fairgrounds, from 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., this is Monday morning, we will be giving backpacks away full of school supplies, prizes, Bible lessons, and more. This is everything that they would have received the week of EBS. They're receiving in a backpack Monday, July 27th from 8.30 to 11.30 a.m. We are in a call to prayer like never before, and we need your help. And so the week of VBS, which would have been the week of 27th through the 31st, we are actually going to pray Tuesday through Friday for one hour a day. Now, we're praying over our nation, over our city, over our state for wisdom in this time of need. We need to pray like never before. So we ask that you please join us all week from Tuesday through Friday, coming together to pray for at least an hour a day over our nation, over our state, over our city and our council members, just for wisdom and guidance during this time. Amen. So the four ways that you can give and bring that blessing to God's kingdom through the Place Church is number one through our website h the number two hm.org you can also give through our church app which is very popular we're very blessed to have that also you can text the word give g-i-v-e to this number and the fourth way that you can uh, give your tithe and your seed to the place church into god's kingdom is through the mail and here is our mailing address right here church i want to say thank you for believing in us and in god's kingdom we are increasing like never before and right here, we're making a difference in this valley like never before. People are being reached. People are being taught the word that haven't heard the word ever. And it's through online and it's through video, which we would have never thought of actually personally here at the Place Church. We're very blessed to have the things that we have to get the word out, to reach you and to reach others like never before. So thank you for your financial gift. Thank you for your tithe. And thank you for your seed and increase like never before according to God's word in Jesus' name. Well, at this time, Pastor Denise is preaching this morning. Her sermon is entitled, Jesus, Our Rope of Hope. Be blessed, church. We'll see you soon. You know, I had a sermon all planned for you guys. I had actually worked on it. I had even preached it to myself. And on Sunday night, while I was sleeping, I kept on hearing the phrase, Jesus is my strong rope of hope. Well, I didn't know what that meant. I kept on hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. So the next morning, that would have been Monday, I got up and if you've got your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn to Hosea chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. I never knew this was here and thank God for Google because it shared with me what I was hearing in my heart. Hosea chapter 11 verses 1 through 4 says, When Israel was a child, I loved them, and I called my son out of Egypt. But the more I called to him, the further he moved from me. He offered sacrifices to the images of Baal, and he burnt incense to idols. I myself taught Israel how to walk, leading him along by my hand. But he doesn't even know or care that it was I who took care of him. Goes on, it says, I led Israel along with my ropes of kindness and of love. 
and I lifted that yoke from his neck, and I myself stooped to feed him. When I read that, that part that I kind of paused at totally hit me hard in my heart, where God said he had given and extended to them my ropes of kindness and love. Because when you read this scripture, it gives us such comfort to know God's patient with us. He loves us just like he loved Israel. I mean, God loves Israel so much, even to this day. And if anything, he's patient with them. And we see again in Hosea chapter 11 that God said he sent them a rope of kindness and love. To me, he also gave them, if you correlate this with other scriptures, a rope of hope. But as we look at this scripture, we see that it shows something that these beautiful people that he called his children, they put themselves in places they didn't need to go. I like calling it a pit. I don't know if you've had a pit this week. I've had some pits that I didn't know what to do. But Israel had put themselves in some places of their own making because of their rebellion because of their selfishness but God could have easily left them in that pit but he didn't do it he lowered unto them ropes of love kindness and also of hope to rescue them now again I'm talking about myself not you I know that you've got it all together but I have found myself in places of my own making places where I didn't want to be messes that I had caused that had caused me to become entrapped but I'm telling you this morning what God told us in Hosea he will extend to us a rope of hope of love and of kindness to get us out of the pit now I don't know about you but I want to shout hallelujah Amen. I need to get out of my pit and again, what I'm telling you is that Jesus is extending his rope of love to you today. He wants you to grab hold of that rope so that you can get out of your circumstance, get out of your pit, and he will set you on solid ground. Now, I know Rhonda knows the song just like I do. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is what? Sinking sand. Guys, we don't need to be in sinking sand in today's world. We need to be on the solid rock. You know, I can remember when Mike and I first started, when we, really when we were dating, he shared with me that he had a degree in elementary education, that he actually was certified for kindergarten through third grade. And he told me a story that one day when he started teaching kindergarten, that he was instructed he was to take the kids from the classroom to the cafeteria. So he said he lined them all up, and he starts marching down to the cafeteria. And when he got to the cafeteria, he turned around to tell the kids, great job, but there was no kids. They were gone. He had lost his classroom because he didn't have them in any way secured to where their destination was. When he told me the story, I said, my good kindergarten teachers would have a rope to be able to guide them to their classrooms. Again, VBS, we use ropes for our younger kids because they didn't know how to walk in a line. But that rope, as a teacher, guides your students to where their destination is. It also keeps them in line. And I want you to know that that's what Jesus desires for us. He wants you to grab hold of that rope of hope so don't get lost or detoured along the way. Jesus knows where we need to go. He knows what we need to do. And he knows how to get us there. But so often we go, I don't have a guide. How do I do it? Well, you and I have been given God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, which is our guide. But you and I have to do something. We got to grab hold of that rope. It can be there and we can say, well, I don't need that. But I'm telling you, when we're going to a destination and we're trusting him, we got to hold on to that rope of hope. 
Now, I received Jesus at the age of seven, and I made a decision at that time to always follow him where he leads. But I'm telling you that you and I need to make a daily decision. Say daily decision. Daily. Say it one more time. Daily decision. daily decision. To hold on to that rope. To let Jesus guide us. Because Jesus is our rope of hope for today, tomorrow, and forever. And some of the good news that I want to share with you today is that every time we have a situation like this week, Every time we find ourselves in sinking sand, the potential is that it only has to be temporary because we've been given the word of God that will deliver us out of every affliction. The rope of hope is literally the word of God. If you have your Bible, turn to Isaiah chapter 49, verse 23. Isaiah 49, 23 says, Then you will know that I am your Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Guys, did you hear that? You won't be disappointed if you hope in him. This week, again, being challenged by what do we do? Not having direction. It was because I didn't have a hold of the rope of hope. And I had to be reminded that if I hope in him, I won't be disappointed. The perfect example in the Old Testament is Abraham. He didn't hold on to the facts. He was dealing with facts just like you and I are. But he's holding on to the rope of hope that God sent to him. And he was a hundred years old. He was still hanging on. Maybe you feel like you're just barely hanging on, but I'm telling you, God has extended to you his rope of hope. Turn to Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Verses 18 through 21 to me explains it better than I could ever. It says, against all hope, Abraham believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet Abraham didn't waver through unbelief regarding the promises of God, but was strengthened in his faith, gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. You know, I love the part where it said, against all hope. What does that mean for you and me? It means against all odds in the natural. Abraham clung to the rope of hope, and he believed in the word of God. You and I have to do the same thing. And I hate to tell you, that's what we're going to be dealing with in the world today. We have to hold on to Jesus. I mean, God gave Abraham the promise just like we've been given promises. But the thing that was so wonderful is that Abraham believed it. He didn't think that it was, well, well, did God mean it for me? Is it because I'm not doing this or doing that? No. Abraham believed what God said. And Abraham didn't deny the facts. He faced them. We taught Michelle and even ourselves that the truth will always outweigh the facts. Now I'm going to say that again because I want it to sink into your heart. The truth will always outweigh the facts. And when you and I place our hope in the truth, just like Abraham did, guess what will happen? Our faith will change the facts. That's one reason why we're going to be praying. We're going to be doing some things like Abraham did and know that we've gotten a hold of his rope of hope. Our hope, it comes from trusting in him. But I'm also going to tell you that you can trust in some other things as well. You can trust in your paycheck. No offense, Mike Echterling, I could trust in you. But the thing is, Mike will let me down. The government may let me down. My paycheck may let me down. 
It may fall through, and what happens is I will lose my hope. Now, I'm not telling you you don't need to trust people. I'm telling you don't trust in people. There's a difference. The only thing we need to trust in is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when we trust in Jesus, then our hope is in him. And we are filled with unconditional joy and peace. This week, I I described myself to Jesse and Michelle and even Mike. I felt like a ping pong ball. Do we cancel? Do we not cancel? No, we're not. Yes, we are. And I told him, I said, I'm tired of being a double-minded man. But I knew that if I just trusted Jesus, he would give me the joy. And even more than that, when I trust him, he was going to take me out of that pit. Have you ever said to yourself, I'm at the end of my rope? Only five of us? Come on. I have felt like I'm holding on with my fingernails. But the problem is, is that when we hold on with our fingernails, we're not trusting him. Worry comes in. Doubt comes in. We become paralyzed with fear, and we're opening the door to other things in our life that do not need to be there. And I know a few of you are saying, well, Denise, I don't have that problem. I'm a Christian. Well, I'm so proud of you. But both non-Christians and Christians deal with this because they let go of the hope. So I want you to realize today we have been given a wondrous truth from Jesus himself. Jesus holds that rope that he wants you to grab hold of. And nothing is strong enough to remove us from his love, his protection, and his provision. Jesus knows every move we do. Jesus cares and he's aware of what our needs are. So maybe if you feel your anxiety level has gone through the roof, especially when we don't know what we're going to wake up to the next day. God told me as I was listening to the broadcast on Tuesday from our governor and I was sitting there pacing, I was reminded that God told Moses, stand still and know. And I said, okay, God, what you're telling me is stop and remember and also shut up, Denise. You can't figure this out. Let God arise and his enemies will be scattered. So I want you to stop and remember that God is on your side. But even more than that, that Jesus loves you. Say, Jesus loves me. me. Say it again. Oh, my goodness, those words, they bring such comfort. Nothing can ever change that. And we can fully trust in Jesus because Jesus holds that rope. And what he has in his loving hands is a way for us never to have to break away from that. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19. Turn to that real quick if you've got your Bible. This hope we have is an anchor of the soul. A hope both sure and steadfast. He wants to be your anchor. He doesn't want you to be a ping pong ball. And when we feel our feet slipping out from under us, because of the strong pull of the culture that we are in, we need to remind ourselves, Jesus is our anchor. Jesus is our rope of hope. There were several times during this week I could feel his hands pushing me in the direction I needed to go. But I also felt he was in front of me reaching out for me. Telling, trust me. I'm sure, I'm strong, and I'm steady. So today I I want you to place your confidence in Jesus. Because guys, he's our only hope. But even more than that, I want you to just breathe him in. Now why I'm saying that is because in Genesis, God said he breathed life into Adam. And Adam became a living soul. Just breathe in his presence. Because when you do that, you're going to find yourself digging your heels into the promises of God. When I was in the South, before Jesse came into my life, I wore high heels three to five inches tall. Because that's the way you had to walk around in Alabama. And man, I knew how to dig my heels in. I never moved. Up here, I almost fall over because I don't have any heels. I want to dig them. So I'm telling you, dig your heels, your three-inch, five-inch stilettos into the Word of God. 
and realize that all of his promises are yes and amen. But I'm also telling you to grab hold of that rope of hope. Grab hold of that anchor that he has provided for you. So if today you're lonely, today if you're depressed, today if you have unforgiveness in your heart, or if you even are rebelling against the things that you know God is telling you to do, maybe you have lack in your life and you don't see how it's going to change, or maybe your body is riddled with sickness, I'm telling you, reach out to Jesus. He is our rope of hope. This week, I think I have probably cried more tears than I have since my dad died. Because I felt like a part of me had died. But I'm telling you, I've grabbed hold of that rope of hope. And what's so beautiful about it is that he grabbed me with his rope as well. He has lassoed me with his love, his mercy, his kindness, And he's letting me know that no weapon formed against any of us will prosper. So today, guys, you've been given a rope of hope. And it's up to us to hold on to it tightly and never let it go. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, I thank you that many of us have found ourselves in the last several months in a pit we don't desire to be in. It even is in a pit that is of our own making. But God, you've promised to extend to us, just like you did your children of Israel, that you will extend to us a rope of hope, love, and kindness. To rescue us out of our pits and to rescue us, Father, out of situations we don't desire to be in. So today we give it all to you. We trust you. Say to Jesus, you trust him right now. We trust you, Father. And we're going to stop complaining and we're going to remember your promises are all yes and amen. So, God, we give you the glory. We thank you for making a way and that, God, no matter what the world says, we will trust the word of God because it forever stands. We give you the glory in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen.